Foreign Minister, thanks for joining me on Upfront. The Qatari government says it cares about the Syrian people. It supports the people of Syria in their struggle. They're being oppressed, uh, expelled from their homes by their government. Can you tell me how many Syrian refugees Qatar has taken in this year? Yeah. It's not only uh, Mahdi, how many Qatari, uh, Syrian sorry, refugees we have in Qatar, but it's about how many uh, Syrian Qatar has been taken care of since the uh, crisis in Syria began. But as we speak today, we have about 54,000 Syrian in Qatar. We started 2011 with about 20,000 plus, and now we have 54,000 in, in Qatar, plus 7,000 Syrian are in a visit visa, which we are renewing it uh, to them. But those Syrians are on visit visas or work no, visas, we don't. they're not refugees. No, no, let me tell you this thing, that in Qatar we don't consider the Syrian are refugees at all. We take them in, we offer them jobs, we offer them all the uh, health care, uh, education, we build two schools for the Syrian in Qatar. We never think that the Syrian who comes to Qatar are refugees. We deal with them as brothers, and we give them all the care they need as Qataris. So when the United Nations says that as per their resettlement scheme for Syrian refugees, Qatar has taken zero compared to even small countries like Iceland, Luxembourg, Liechtenstein, do you think that's unfair comparison when they yeah. say zero? Who said, who said so? According to the United Nations High Commission for Refugees, on their resettlement scheme for Syrian refugees, Qatar and the other Gulf countries have taken zero. No, this is not true. No. We have now, as I told you, we have 54,000. And for your, uh, you know, for the information is that we are, uh, as we speak today, through the education above all, uh, educated child, we are taking care of 600,000 child in Syria and out of Syria on the refugees camp, uh, teaching them. The root cause of the conflict is, of course, Bashar al-Assad. Uh, and his war machine, and your strategy has been to try and topple Assad or get him to leave office uh, by funding and arming uh, Syrian opposition groups. You're now ratcheting up the rhetoric. You mentioned recently that Qatar would even consider, quote, military intervention to protect the Syrian people. Do you mean actual Qatari ground forces going in to fight the Syrian army, or are you referring to just more arms for the rebels? Because Hezbollah, uh, Syrian government voices have already threatened Doha with retaliation were you to get involved militarily. Well, uh, what I meant is the friend of Syria, the core group friend of Syria, will do whatever necessary to protect the Syrian people. This is what I meant exactly. Well, what, is it, what does that mean with, exactly? With all mean to support the Syrian... So would you consider Qatari forces going in? No, this is out of question to have a soldier's uh, foot on the ground. And I think the Syrian people does not want any one of us to be on the ground. They Qatari, can liberate... Qatari airstrikes? No, no, they can liberate their country themselves. You talk about supporting... Uh, groups within Syria, the people of Syria, to fight. Uh, many people believe that in doing so, you've also funded a lot of militant groups in Syria, such as ISIL and Jabhat al-Nusra. Germany's international development minister said publicly last year that you have to ask who is arming, who is financing ISIL. The key word there is Qatar. U.S. Vice President Joe Biden has said Gulf countries were, quote, so determined to take down Assad that they, quote, poured hundreds of millions of dollars and thousands of tons of weapons into the hands of al-Nusra and al-Qaeda. This is not a true or not, an, uh, not a true uh, statement. If you want to know who is supporting ISIL, then you have to focus on the regime itself. The regime is the one who been acting as a magnetic to have uh, ISIL in Syria. And uh, we are uh, in an ally coalition against the terrorists in Syria. And we are with so the... So the U.S. Vice President doesn't know what he's talking about? No, we are, we are with the United States in a coalition the against Vice the Vice President said Gulf countries poured money and weapons he into the hands he didn't of Jabhat al-Nusra. No, no, he, he, didn't, he, didn't mention, he didn't mention Qatar. I mean, cap my capacity here, I can speak about Qatar. So other Gulf countries may have no, done so? No, no, no. I can tell you uh, that uh, we consider uh, ISIL and Jabhat al-Nusra are, uh, uh, and the German minister who said Qatar is behind financing ISIL? I think we have, we have received an apology from the German government about okay. what his, their minister have said, you know. Okay, uh, well, look, you they say... Consider this, they consider this an uh, individual statement okay. and does not belong to the government. So put aside the German minister and the U.S. vice president, you say you have nothing to do with ISIL or Jabhat al-Nusra, but you have said you're working with Ahrar al-Sham. In fact, you've said Ahrar al-Sham are one of the honorable rebel groups in Syria. 
despite the fact that this is a hardline group which has rejected democracy, which shares its commanders with Al-Qaeda in Syria, shares the same, quote, end goal as ISIL, a so-called Islamic State, and which has been accused of war crimes by Human Rights Watch, of gunning down children, of hostage taking. You have no problems working with a group you like are, that? You are evaluating them as such? Or that is on, on their them. basis of what they've said. Ahrar al-Sham is a Syrian uh, uh, liberated uh, group, and they are among other Syrian army, among other Syrian. The group. leader of Ahrar al-Sham told Al Jazeera that we share the same end goal as ISIL, an Islamic state. We only disagree on tactics. Uh, That's the group you're they supporting. They don't. They have different ideology, uh, Mahdi. That's not and what he's Ahrar saying. Ahrar al-Sham is a moderate group. A and moderate group are, whose founder, Abu Khaled al-Suri, declared publicly that he was the representative of Ayman al-Zawahiri, the al-Qaeda leader in Syria. No, they have nothing to do with I can guarantee you that they have no link But whatsoever. they're saying they have links. No, no, this Promise is... You'll say they don't have no, links. No, we, the leaders of Ahrar al-Sham are I saying am, we have links. I am telling you, I am telling you that Ahrar al-Sham is a Syrian group. Uh, they look for their uh, liberation. And they are working amongst another uh, moderate group. And so when the leader of Ahrar al-Sham tells Al Jazeera, as he did in 2013, that democracy is governing people according to the rules they please, we don't agree with democracy, is he lying? You cannot have democracy off the shelf and just ask the people to have your democracy. Their goal is to bring the regime down because of by, the brutality. By killing women and children, according, no, no, to, no, no. I according to Human Rights Watch report of October 2013, entire families were gunned down by rebel groups including Ahrar al-Sham. Uh, rest assured, if Ahrar al-Sham committed such uh, crimes as you are mentioning, then they will have a firm stand from the countries who consider them Syrian. I don't think Ahrar al-Sham committed any of these crimes. Okay, well, you're here... I'm not here to defend Ahrar al-Sham, by the way. You are defending no, them. No, no, not to defend them. I'm saying, saying, I'm saying Ahrar al-Sham is among the other moderate groups who are struggling for their freedom. I have to be clear on this. You've said you want to see a democratic Syria, uh, a very noble goal. I think many people would agree with you on that. But given Qatar isn't a democracy itself, some people might say it's a bit rich for you to lecture others in the region on the need for democracy. What more democracy you want than we have the best uh, health uh, uh, care system, the best education and... That's uh, not the, the definition highest, of democracy with uh, no, respect, no, What do you want? You don't people, have democratic if elections. People, if you, you don't have an elected head no, of government. No, but this is not, this is not accurate. We have our uh, constitution, and there is in the constitution, there will be, a con there will be an elected uh, shura. We are uh, progressing. We are improving. I think you've postponed elections two or three times already. No, this is, technic uh, this is technicalities. So Purely who in the Qatari government is elected? No, you have municipality are fully elected. The no, local they municipality don't, they don't control the country. The emir no, no, and no, people like yourself they, control the country. No, but the they are they are well here. They are well listened but to. That's not the definition but of a democracy. You're tell me, not a tell democracy. me, tell me, do you want the democracy that's uh, exported, imported? This no. is the democracy one. I don't want anything. We I'm just have, asking you a question. No, no, you we, say you want democracy have in Syria. Own, we have, so I'm saying why not have democracy in Qatar first? We have and, our own democracy, which everybody is happy with. We have, as I told you, we have. So would you be happy with a Qatari-style democracy in Syria? We have our. If they, if they have their Qatari style, then well, they will be, uh, this will be a good uh, model. You know, we have but no best, one in the world will consider it democratic best, with respect for foreign You have best, no one in the world best Qatar health, is a democracy. Best health system, best education, uh, the highest uh, uh, income per capita. China has one more? of the best school system in the world. No one considers what China to be a more? democracy. Well, this is from your view, but the Chinese people think that their country is democratic. Well, then so. President Assad could say my country is a democracy. There's no, no independent measure. No, Everyone's no, a democracy. No, no. Let, we have to differentiate something, Mahdi. Yeah. You know, you don't bomb uh, your no, people no. and kill 300,000 and, and you say I'm and a he's an abhorrent you And he's an abhorrent leader for doing that. I'm talking about the system. No, no, no. The system, the system is elections is what the, defines the a democracy. System was, uh, the system was uh, needed needed in Syria is uh, 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 minor reforms at the time when Dar'a started and the Assad did not do it. Agreed. They did not want to throw Assad out of the, of the system. They just wanted a minor reforms which he rejected and he faced his people with the nozzle of the gun. This is the story. Agreed. And what he's done, everyone agrees, war crimes have gone on in Syria. Uh, what are people supposed to make uh, of Qatar when a non-violent poet, Muhammad al-Ajami, is locked up there for 15 years for simply reciting a poem that the government didn't like, while a Saudi preacher, Saad bin Atiq al Atiq, is invited into Doha's Grand Mosque and onto Qatari State TV to say that Christians, Jews, Alawites, Shias should be destroyed. You arrest the poet, 
but not the preacher of hate. No, this is proof something to you that in Qatar we have freedom of speech and uh, everybody can express himself freely. This has happened. There is a breach uh, in, in the state who, uh, who has called last year to burn the Quran and kill the Muslims and nobody put him in jail or anything. He was expressing himself and this is a fact. For Al-Ajmi is a different case. Al-Ajmi has violated a criminal code in Qatar. So by violating the code with the poem, he's, ex he's arrested and prosecuted. But somebody who says destroy Christians, Jews, Alawites and Shias on state TV, you don't, you don't no, want to arrest him? No, no, he was, he was expressing his individual. It's wrong what on he state, said. On Qatar no, no, state TV, what you don't said, get on there But on he's own. not there anymore. He, he's, he's not allowed. He to won't be allowed anymore? No, no, this preacher from Sadrid? Did, did you hear about him after that speech? One of the big issues and worries about uh, the Middle East right now is the division between Iran and some of the uh, Gulf countries, some of the other Middle East nations. The Emir of Qatar at the UN last uh, month said he wanted to host a dialogue uh, initiative between the Gulf states and Iran. Uh, and that would be welcome, I'm sure, to a lot of people who want to see the two sides sitting down. What do you want to see discussed at that initiative? A lot of people say that the split between you guys is religious, it's theological, it's Sunni Shia. Is that what you're going to be debating, the sectarian split in the region? This is, this is a good question. Uh, we don't see the dispute with Iran in the region as Sunni Shia, I think. We never had this before 2003, by the way. Uh, shouldn't you see a division? What we are seeing and what we are fearing is an Arab-Persian uh, conflict, which we want to avoid. This is why His Highness the Emir has uh, called for an initiative for a dialogue. Uh, I believe with, uh, with, uh, uh, with this uh, opportunity, we will have uh, to discuss all files, uh, security files, good neighborhood, the uh, interfering in, in, in other states, uh, internal affairs. I think uh, uh, the, uh, the other side, the Iranian, uh, has to calm down the, 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 the language, uh, so to help uh, the, the uh, you know, uh, to help uh, to facilitate for a dialogue. So if there is a dialogue, the dialogue should be a serious one to cover all the aspects of a good neighborhood uh, state. Uh, there's been lots of controversy surrounding Qatar's hosting of the World Cup in 2022, allegations of corruption among others. You've said that racism uh, is what's driving these attacks, the idea of a Muslim or Arab country hosting the World Cup. Many of your critics would say that the racism isn't against Qatar, it's by Qatar against migrant workers from Nepal, Bangladesh, India, who are treated in really awful conditions, who are dying in, in, in their hundreds every year because Qatari authorities don't value their lives. That's the criticism aimed at Qatar on, on, in terms of racism. Well, this is, uh, this is out of context, uh, criticism, actually. Since 2013, we've been working uh, to improve all aspects of the, uh, you know, our guests, uh, worker, who are helping us in developing our country. Uh, today, we have 1.8 million uh, worker who are helping Qatar to develop, not only for the 2022, we have the vision for 2030. And they are uh, uh, supporting about 1.3 million family in their but you would agree that conditions need to be improved? We are improving. And who says that we are not improving? We well, started well, the independent review that you commissioned, the Qatari government on labor laws, said yes. that your government should call for a comprehensive independent study into the number of migrant worker deaths by sudden cardiac arrest. You haven't done that. No, no, we did. Study. We have we have an independent study by DLA Piper. But they're, they the, ones, but they're they the ones who said you need to now do a study. Yeah, which we are doing, which okay. we are doing. And then we when find will that be out, released? And then we find out that's all this... Uh, uh, incident which this reports comes from uh, that they are not only because of the two, uh, 2023 uh, 2022 and last one Greg Dyke what do you say to the chairman of the English Football Association Greg Dyke who thinks we won't see a Qatar World Cup that you'll be stripped of it once the Swiss authorities complete their criminal investigation he says you're not going to get the World Cup so I want to away. see I want to see his face when we host the 2022 when we won the 2022 Mahdi we won, we won it because we presented the best file ever and I said this before, and I keep saying this, and we deserve to have a 2022 World Cup in Qatar, in an Arabic state, in an Arabic Islamic country. The Arabic region needs such a tournament for the youth of the Arab region, and I think we deserve to have one. Foreign Minister, thanks for joining me on Upfront. Mahdi, thank you very thank much. You.